Will you join me in our call to worship, please? We are a justice-making, truth-seeking people. We gather in the community of believers and seekers. We share a reverence for the mystery of life. Come, let us worship together. By lighting a flame in the chalice, we bond ourselves to worldwide Unitarian Universalists in the community of worship. May the flame's light represent our continuing search for truth, and may the flame's warmth represent human empathy. And on this flower, Communion Sunday, may we see beauty in nature and in the souls of all in this community. Please rise in body or spirit and join in singing hymn number 63, Spring Has Now Unwrapped the Flowers. Three. 
Well, happy Flower Communion Sunday, everybody. Yeah, woohoo, I think it's, that's a long phrase, so woohoo is fine. That's good, that's good. Uh, so this is our annual celebration of our unity and diversity. I, I feel like, I'm gonna go with five. There are five great mysteries of Unitarian Universalism, and unity and diversity is, is one of them. When we celebrate Flower Communion, each of us brings a flower, or not, but we'll say we did, and then we leave with a different flower, one that somebody else brought. The practice of exchanging flowers dates back to 1923, almost an entire century. A Unitarian minister named Norbert Chopik developed this ritual as a way for his congregation to express their connection to one another and the beauty of their individuality. At that first flower communion, Norbert Chopik said, these flowers are like ourselves different shapes and different sizes, each needing different kinds of care, but each beautiful, each important and special in its own way. We'll hear more about him and the First Flower Communion later. For now, though, we're going to do something that is kind of new, that we, it may be weird, but we're going to do it. It's going to be great. <laughs> to help us start thinking about our unity and our diversity, we're going to use Mentimeter, which we've used a couple of times before with varying degrees of success. But I'm going to say we're on an upward trajectory, and today is going to be even better than last time. This is a good way for us to interact and also integrates people who are at home or wherever they might be on Zoom. So you'll need a phone or another device that has internet connection. And the first step is to use your internet browser to navigate to menti.com, menti.com. So that would be your Internet Explorer, your Chrome, Firefox, Safari, whatever you've got, and go to menti.com, however you normally visit websites. You're just going to visit this one. And if you don't have a phone or whatever with you, then you're going to have to lean over to your neighbor and say, let's share. And once you get there, then you're going to enter a code. Taylor, can we see the next slide, please? There's your code. 7083840 People are grumbling. What's happening? It's not working. Okay. What? The code doesn't exist. All right, you know what? The code changed. Look, it's at the top. You see it? It's 4614108. I guess it changed between when I made this. We'll say it was a week ago. Maybe it was yesterday. Uh, 4614108. It's at the top in small, small font. 4614108. People are doing it. We got some hearts down there, so we see we've had at least five people figure it out so far. Good. Excellent. I am heartened and encouraged. 4614108. We're just going to get better and better at this. Okay, so we're going to go on to the first slide, but that tiny font at the top will stay there. So if you haven't found us yet with 4614108, you will be able to join as we go. So Taylor, let's hit that next slide, please. So the first question is, something that makes me unique is. So I'd like to know something that you feel is unique about you within the context of our congregation. So for example, for me, I'm a proud Texan, and I think that stands out a little at BUC. So I might enter Texas or Texan. So again, if you're still trying to find us, 4614108 at menti.com. There we go. All right. There we go. All the things that make us special and who we are. Hmm, enoughness, I love that. Nice, this is good. I love it. So far we've got 32 responses. Let's give it a, a couple more seconds here for a few more. Sure, uh, my sense of humor University of Delaware graduate. I am funny. I'm from Mount Clemens. We have California. Ron Fredericks tells us he's the grandson of Chopic. We're going to talk about that, Ron. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see, uh, defied my upbringing to come here, perpetual music in my head, I ride a trike, Canadian cat lover, now my question is, are you Canadian or are the cats Canadian? Uh, somebody here is a Detroiter. I was in Catholic seminary for five years. I'm a proud teacher. I ride a Harley. I was not raised in any faith and came to the UU faith as my first religion. Somebody here is very organized. That does make you stand out. Who are you? Raise your hand. <laughs> Someone's lived overseas. We've got sense of humor, two-time cancer survivor. All right. Good for you. Somebody here says that they confuse people with their gender. I don't know that that makes you entirely unique in this congregation. We do have a lot of that going on. But it does something special about you, for sure. Native Manhattanite from a large family. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about what makes us special and unique, let's think a little bit about what makes us uh, have, what do we have in common? So here you'll have the opportunity to enter up to three things, and this is a word cloud, so the more something gets entered, the bigger that word will appear. So this is a one word answer usually one word something that we have in common is and if you're still not with us we're at menti.com and the code is 4614108 so some stuff that we have in common for example you know i think we're a loving group i think we like to laugh we're committed to justice yeah there we go i'm gonna let this build a little bit and then i'll read some of them to you All right, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas. So we've got a little over 30 answers so far. And I would say what's been steadily the largest is love. And next to that is hope and kindness. Mm -hmm. Caring. What else do you guys see? Justice. I'm going to repeat it for the people at home. They won't be able to hear you. What? Hope. hope. Yes. Anything else stick out? I see empathy, human, absolutely. Okay, so um, I feel like there's a way that we can then see this later, Sarah, right? Yeah, yes, so we'll share this later where everybody will be able to see it, probably have it on our Facebook page um, so that it'll be just a still shot of what wound up being the biggest, but I wanna thank everybody for participating in that. Um, I think that went really well uh, and it'll just continue to go well and even better as we, as we move forward. But as you can see, there are things about us that make us individuals and there are things about us that make us a community. We are many and we are one. Thank you again for participating. One can never be sure of what's going to happen in a Unitarian service. <laughs> it is time to demonstrate our gratitude. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning service, and joy. One way to live out this mission is by giving half our weekly offering to a nonprofit organization that shares our values and addresses needs in one <clears throat> of these areas, environmental action, income equality, civic, civic engagement, <clears throat> and racial justice. We support a new organization each month. <clears throat> this month's plate collection recipient is the Michigan Environmental Justice Coalition, the MEIC. The coalition works to achieve a clean, healthy, and safe environment for those Michigan residents who suffer from the greatest impacts of climate change and inadequate economic policies. The Michigan Environmental Justice Committee builds power and unity within our community 
so that everyone can thrive. So let there be an offering in support of our beloved community and organizations that build the world we dream about. This morning's offering will now be received with gratitude. The ushers will please come forward. We are a church of open minds, of loving hearts, and helping hands. With gratitude, we dedicate this offering to the good works of our congregation and dedicate ourselves to its service. Thank you. come to the time in our service set aside for centering and spiritual practice. We begin with the sharing of joys and sorrows from our congregation. We start this morning with a concern from Kathy Ransom. Kathy shares, please send healing thoughts to my daughter, Liz. She's had an MS flare up and will be having parathyroid surgery in two weeks, three weeks, sorry, in three weeks. We have more sorrows in our congregation this morning. We share in the, a concern with Libby Signal as well as a sorrow. Libby's brother, Tom Paff, died earlier this week after a long battle with alcoholism. Tom leaves behind a wife, two children, and two grandchildren. Also this week, Libby's mother, Martha Paff, was hospitalized at St. Joe's. She will be released to Bellbrook Skilled Nursing for rehabilitation next week. For those interested in contacting Martha, she would prefer cards that can be sent to Bellbrook. And we also have joys in our congregation. Today we hear from Mike and Dyke. Mike shares, my joy is how much the BUC community has meant to me over the years. He continues, I joined BUC in my 20s, signed the book in 1974. Through a BUC friend, I found my next church home and community and life improvement classes that I really needed, and that was Scientology. And he continues that he's considered himself a Scientologist more than a UU since the 80s, but he still very much upholds BUC's UU values to this day and gladly comes back to visit now and then. He continues, I'm always happy to see members that I know and share in sorrows for those who have passed on. And he concludes, another joy for me is to see how much BUC has changed and grown over the years. I'm happy to see the strong commitments to social improvements ongoing and by living example. I 
invite you now to move with me into a spirit of prayer and centering. Spirit of love and life. We are at a celebration for our congregation that acknowledges our individuality and also affirms our unity. We are individual, we are individual people who make one community. This community is who it is because of the people who are a part of it and at the same time, the people who are a part of this community are who they are because of this community. There is an ongoing, ever moving flow and exchange of energy and ideas between all of us. Through our interactions, may we be spurred to greater joy. May we be moved to action May we find new creative pursuits we never considered for ourselves. May we find parts of ourselves we didn't realize were there. May we see ourselves reflected in each other and also be pushed a little beyond our comfort zone so that we can grow and expand and enlarge and, and enliven this life and this world. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. Norbert and Maya Topic, after whom the woods on the north side of our church campus are memorialized, played significant roles in developing Unitarianism in Czechoslovakia as well as in this country. Born of a Catholic mother and an atheist father, Norbert, as an adult, moved from Catholicism to ministry in the Baptist Church, but ultimately he continued his liberal spiritual journey, becoming a Unitarian minister. In looking for common outside, communion outside the boundaries of bread and wine, he eventually settled on the natural, the use of flowers suggesting beauty of the individual and together of the community. On June 4, 1923, 
Čapek introduced the flower communion to his congregation in Czechoslovakia. <coughs> in 1940, Maya Čapek introduced the flower communion to this country. And now I use the words of Reginald Zatoli. It was introduced to the members of our Cambridge, Massachusetts church by Dr. Čapek's wife, Maya Čapek. The Czech-born Maya had met Norbert Čapek in New York while he was studying for his doctorate. And it was at her urging, in part, that Norbert left Baptist ministry and turned to Unitarianism. But the other part of his self-conversion is in a 1919 comment in his diary. He had left Bohemia primarily because he was under threat. His theological sin, he was charged with heresy at the hands of a Baptist tribunal, but was acquitted. He then accepted a call to serve a Baptist church in the city of New York. But soon after, he wrote in his diary, I cannot be a Baptist anymore. Not even in compromise. The thirst of new desires, new worlds, is burning inside me. Two years later, the Chapics joined a Unitarian church in New Jersey. The transformation was complete. The Chapics returned to Czechoslovakia in 1921 and established the dynamic liberal church in Prague. Maya Chapik was ordained in 1926. It was during her tour back in the United States that Maya introduced the Flower Communion to the Unitarian Church in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Now, unfortunately, Maya was unable to return to Prague due to the outbreak of World War II. And it was not until the war was over that Norbert Chapek's death in a Nazi concentration camp, the camp of Dachau, was revealed. So let it be said here that the naming of the Chapek Woods memorializes the good works of Norbert and Maya Chapek. It gives us meaning as we understand the reasons for the attribution, the meaning of the beauty of the individual, the beauty of diversity, and the beauty of the good earth itself. But there is also a unique BUC connection to the Chapics. Ron Frederick, a longtime member of this church, is grandson of Norbert and step-grandson of Maya. Ron now lives in Washington Township, and for that reason, we seldom see him here, but his heart is with us today. Not only is his heart <laughs> with us today, but he himself is Nor Norbert. Uh, Ron, stand and be recognized. <laughs> May we remember this BUC connection to Norbert and Maya Chapik, and may our congregation forever enjoy the Chapik Woods and the Flower Communion. Together, may it be.
Brazilian little thing, just like mama made you. No one needs to save you. Anana, anana, anana. Wildflower in the spring, oh, they can't contain you through the cracks you break through. Na na na, na na, na na. I deserve congratulations, cause I came out the other side. I've been having revelations, and I'm gonna let them shine. I deserve congratulations, I never thought that I'd survive. If you tell me I will make it, that's when I, that's when I had super blue. So you got that wildfire in your soul Don't you ever let it go Make it burn so bright that they all know I deserve congratulations Cause I came out the other side If they tell me revelations And I'm gonna let them shine I deserve congratulations I never thought that I'd survive If you tell me I won't make it That's when I, that's when I Super blue What a super bloom is because I'm like that. I hear a song and I like it, and I'm like, "What does this mean? I need to know all of the things." Uh, it's do you, do you guys know? It's where uh, wildflowers that have been laying dormant for a period of time, particularly in the desert, get a big rainstorm and then just like pop, like tons of wildfires, flowers at once. It's exciting, and that's what's happening with us. <laughs> We have had a year, and we are here today to say so long, <laughs> 2022, <laughs> and celebrate all of the things that we did and all the things that we overcame and all the resilience that we have shown during this year. A fascination with the tension between individual and community is central to Unitarian Universalism, and it's how we get stuff done. Many of us are drawn to Unitarian Universalism because it is a religion that encourages us to follow our own path. We are a free range kind of people and we need to roam about and explore things for ourselves. And yet, at the same time, we place an importance on human relationships right at the center of our religious tradition. And the limits of what is acceptable in Unitarian Universalism are defined by what a certain behavior does to human relationships. We temper our freedom in order to promote an environment that allows others to have their freedom. It's beautiful and it is hard and it's messy and it's why we love being here making this church together. 
As I said earlier, this process is one of the great mysteries of Unitarian Universalism. We need both space and pressure. We need to find affirmation of our beliefs and our perspectives, and then we grow. And we need to be challenged to consider ourselves through someone else's experience of us, and then we grow. What most of us long for in UU churches is a combination of comfort and challenge. We want to find ourselves easily reflected in the church's culture and practice. We want to feel at ease and surrounded by like-minded people. We want a place where we can feel vulnerable or at least maybe a little less guarded than in our daily lives. And we want to be around people who are different enough from us so that we might learn something and grow. We want new ideas new music, new art, new perspectives. We want an encounter with the new that will inspire us to grow. We want unity and diversity. These things are not at odds, not here. Birmingham Unitarian Church has been a bastion of progressive religion in, De in the Detroit suburbs since 1948. We are very good at what we do. We are a haven for free thinkers who want a little structure and input. We are a home for religious seekers and believers and doubters and everything in between. We are a people who love art and culture, literature and humanity. We are committed to justice, not just in word, but in deed. We are committed to raising conscientious, kind, thoughtful humans not everybody kept their RE programs running during the past two years. We did. We are tenacious. And we are committed to Unitarian Universalism as a religious voice for the 21st century. We had a year, find me later when there's no kids around and I'll tell you what kind of year it was. It was hard but it was beautiful. I wanna make sure that we thank the people who made that possible, and that includes, first and foremost, our staff. I'm not gonna ask you to stand up, but let's say you might, and it would be okay. Uh, <laughs> Valerie Phillips. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So everybody does a lot, but I would say that Valerie's most outstanding accomplishment from this year is the lower level <laughs> renovation. Please come downstairs after the service. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. But um, yeah, Valerie, wow. Thank you for all your hard work downstairs and otherwise. Uh, Joanne Copeland. I don't know who Joe's with us today. Uh, Joanne found some very interesting, savvy financial opportunities for us this year. And, you know, it's, it's a like running joke, you know, so what have your recent accomplishments been? Well, I paid the bills. It actually was an accomplishment this year to get anything done. <laughs> so, <laughs> the fact that she did that, no disruptions, and then also found some really cool and interesting financial things for us to do, very important. So thanks to Joanne. <laughs> Stephen and Abha. are two different people who do two different things, but also have one job. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know how widely this is known. Um, church budgets are open information, but I don't know that anybody's like, let me look at the budget and understand what's happening. But Stephen Abha ran our music ministry this year with half a year's worth of budget. We thought we might open in January, so we budgeted for that, and then we opened in September. Part of how they pulled that off was by performing themselves um, many Sundays when that has not typically been their practice and isn't very common for directors of music ministry to do that. And also working with uh, congregants and fostering a, a cadre of people to help participate in our music ministry. So thank you for your hard work. Uh, 
Uh, Jason McDonald and Kirk Tucker are also two different people who have kind of the same job, but um, I want to thank them jointly for uh, doing a lot of work to fit the, the con constantly changing needs as we navigated what building usage looked like during the COVID times. Uh, always getting things done, always doing so with a, you know, we'll say fair to Midland, sometimes positive attitude. <laughs> you know, it got tough some days and I don't blame them. <laughs> But it's a big facility, and they've done a lot of excellent work to keep us up and running. So, Jason, thank you. Andrew Shrek. Andrew worked himself out of a job <laughs> on purpose. Andrew came in with the idea of how can we whittle the rental coordinator position down to um, make it more manageable for another staff position. And uh, the way that he did that was by researching a lot of different kinds of software, trying different things out, and a lot of automating, a lot of streamlining. So thank you, and it was nice working with you. <laughs> Sarah Constantakis. <laughs> So nowhere on Sarah's job description does it say anything about Zoom. That should be known. We hired Sarah because she understood how Facebook worked. So here we are uh, three years later, and um, Sarah has been responsible for everything that's you know, happening in our multi-platform world, including technology on Sunday mornings. There's been a lot of congregant help for that too, and we're gonna talk about that in a bit. But Sarah has been working well outside of her job description for two years, um, which is changing. We'll talk about that too, but thank you, Sarah, for always going above and beyond. <laughs> Our staff do the things that make it possible, though, for you to do the work that actually makes the church run. We couldn't go far without our staff, but the, what they do really is lay the groundwork and then you take it and you run with it from there. And it really does come down to you. So if you served on a committee this past year, I'd like for you to please stand or raise your hand to be on any committee at all. I love how people are like half standing. It's like, do you not know that you served on it? Because you very much served on the committee. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. that's That's humility though. And I, I do appreciate um, where you're coming from on that. Uh, I'm sure that we also have people on Zoom who participated in committees this year. You know, nobody ever wants to be on a committee, I don't think. Um, although it's a good way to make friends and, you know, put some structure in your life and get a project done. But uh, during this past year, uh, you know, it was, it was a year, and the amount of work that went into getting things done cannot be overstated. So thank you to everybody who served on a committee. Also, I wanna mention our board of trustees. You know, being the, uh, the board of trustees at UU Church is always uh, a challenge, right? That's the, the governance of a garden of individuals requires fertilization and pruning. And our board has held that balance admirably this year. So I wanna thank our board as well for their hard work. Thanks to their diligence, we have a vision of ministry to guide us in the coming years. That vision gives us a focus in three different areas, anti-racism work, environmental action, and having more fun. <laughs> Pretty excited about all of those. Uh, so I met with our incoming director of congregational life last week. You guys remember Sarah Constantakis. <laughs> we started planning events for late summer and early fall. We we're gonna do a field day. I'm deeply excited about the fun things that are already in the works. And I am so thrilled that we have a new position to take the Zoom things away from Sarah so she can do the fun things. Uh, and you know, hopefully Zoom will also be fun. So uh, also welcome to our audiovisual coordinator, Mr. David Yurasek. David will be starting on July 1st, and he's gonna help us do great things with all of the technology at our disposal. So it's not like, Ugh, how are we gonna do this? But oh, we get to do. So. <laughs> and of course, I am delighted to welcome our new Director of Religious Education, Shannon Snyman. Shannon has great ideas and is already formulating plans as well. 
It was a year, and one of those big obstacles that I mentioned earlier was the lower level. After the service ends, I invite you downstairs. We're going to have a ribbon cutting ceremony. There's a, there's a ribbon. We're really going to do it. You can come see where we're going to put all of these religious education classrooms, where we're going to have committee meetings, which I should, committee meetings are super fun. I shouldn't have said that. They're great. <laughs> Maybe we'll be able to have food again. <laughs> But all of the, the, many, the committee meetings and all the fun events and everything will be happening downstairs in the space that we are able to use again. So please come downstairs, take a look at it, see Valerie's good works, watch Valerie cut a ribbon, and then we're going to walk out through the prairie into Chopic Woods and learn a little bit more about Norbert Chopic and what we have growing outside. We'll start downstairs, we'll go through the back doors, there's table set up, there's cakes, there's coffee. If you're not up for that, there's also more coffee because I wound up planning things, so there's lots of coffee. Um, over by the playground, so you just walk straight out the pavilion to the playground, and there's uh, coffee lemonade and some gluten-free cookies there. Beloved, there is so much potential before us because we are that potential. What we've done this past year is a testament to who we are as a people and to what we value. A church is a reflection of the individuals who are a part of that church, and the people who are a part of the church are a reflection of each other. This is how we interpret Unitarian Universalism in our context, and it inspires us to grow. We have so much to be proud of from this year, and we have so much to look forward to in the next year, and the one after that. Every year at Flower Communion, we honor the memory of Norbert Chopic. We each bring a flower, and we leave with another one. It is a simple, sweet ritual that reminds us of how much we impact each other. We leave here changed because of our interactions with each other and we change others through those interactions too. I am me because you are you and together we are Birmingham Unitarian Church. It's time to hand out flowers now. So I see we've got Kat, I saw Sam, Bo and Sarah. Will you guys help me pass out flowers please? Thank you.
let's sing our final hymn this morning. <laughs> Answering the call of love, would you rise in body and spirit and join with gusto and power on this beautiful late spring day? <laughs> this world as a beacon of hope and joy, go in love, go in peace. Now that our worship has ended, our service begins. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. <laughs> 